welcome you to Phoenix, Arizona for the final game of this three game series between the San Diego Padres and the Arizona Diamondbacks. It's a warm day in the desert. And last night, the Diamondbacks were hot. A.J. Pollock picked up his fifth home run of the year. That's a team leading five home runs for A.J. Pollock, part of a two hit night for him and a win for the Diamondbacks. On the other side, Christian Villa in a wave of 520 average during his eight game hitting streak, three homers and eight RBIs as he rolls along. Padres trying to get the last game of this series. We welcome you inside the broadcast booth here at Chase Field. Don Orsillo along with Mark Grant. Welcome to Padres Baseball. Well, today, Joey Lucchese is on the mound. He comes in at 2-0 and, oh and fresh off a very good start against the San Francisco Giants. We've got one heck of a pitching matchup, a couple of lefties, so stay tuned for this one. But let's first start with Joey Lucchese. He throws the churb. Change up grip, acts like a curveball, hence the name the churb. Last start against the Giants, six solid innings. He struck out nine. He didn't walk anybody. He throw it any time, any point of the game and count and look at that percentage 72 of his strikeouts this season have come via the chirp this is the pitch we're going to look to this afternoon here in Arizona and how it plays against these Arizona Diamondbacks well, as you mentioned a marquee pitching matchup today Patrick Corbin he's off to a 3 and 0 start with a 1.65 ERA this guy was an all star in 2013 he had Tommy John surgery and really Don, right now he is healthy as he's ever been ever since the Tommy John surgery he's got electric stuff and his numbers prove it he works quickly he pounds the zone 3 and 0 record minuscule ERA and look at the walks to strikeouts 37 strikeouts only five walks why not only strikes quality strikes 73 percent of his strike are via the slider. So he's got the four seamer. He'll two seam it once in a while. This kid does not throw a changeup. He's tried in the past. It's that slider that's the wipeout slider. That's why he has all those strikeouts. Well, coming up, graded on a churb. Bob Scanlon will look into the Padres starters' favorite pitch when we come back to Chase Field. Final game of the series. Next.
Joey Lucchese. He's been nothing but brilliant since his Major League call-up. In his four starts, he's gone 2-0 and with a 1.66 earned run average. And the talk of Major League Baseball has been his pitch, the churve. It's been his weapon to go to. Let's take a look at it. This is how he holds it. Now, you see sort of a semi-traditional change-up grip with the index finger on the side. He throws it across the seams, which is a little bit different. But let's see what the pitch actually does in action. And the great thing about it is he can do so many different things with it. He can go backdoor with it for a strike to the right-handers. He can also go down and in if he needs to to get the right-handers to swing over the top of it. And it's also been a great weapon, of course, against the left-handers. Here he gets a batter looking. Outstanding. Let's take a closer look at it. There you see the grip change up grip but it doesn't have the traditional change up movement it usually goes down in this one goes to left to right like a curveball hence the name the churve it's a change up grip with curveball action and it has been absolutely devastating he uses it 40 percent of the time 18 times he's used it for the strikeout and opposing batters have hit only 154 against it it's proven its effectiveness in every kind of weather condition as well. He used it at Coors effectively, and hopefully it's going to be a big weapon for him again tonight. Well, the big matchup to watch tonight is going to be Will Myers versus Patrick Corbin. Myers has gotten the better of him, 9 for 16. Let's see if that happens again tonight. Padres, Diamondbacks coming up next right here on Fox Sports San Diego. on the unexpected with Nissan's available intelligent safety shield technology innovation that excites by Sequan Casino opening in 2019 at Sequan's brand new 300 room resort and hotel by Tough Turtle Turf a full landscape design company and by Petco the pet company now the Padres matched up here against the Diamondbacks in game three of the series trying to win the series roof is closed it's time now for the weather report brought to you by your always sunny Honda dealers of San Diego County outside 93 degrees southwest breeze at uh, five miles per hour and partly cloudy the forecast for the remainder of the day now yesterday they started with the roof closed and opened it up as the game went on. With today being a day game, I imagine it'll be closed the entire day today. Don Orsillo, Mark Grant, and Bob Scanlon with you from Phoenix. Last game of the series, and then well, Mark Go coming up here to lead it off. Check out the starting lineup for the Padres, brought to you by your San Diego County Toyota dealers. Mark Go in center, Myers in right, being away with third. Hosmer is at first base, Barella at second, coming in from the outfield. Galvis is at short with Caesar in left. Hedges does the catching and Luke Casey the pitcher bats out of the nine spots still looking 
for his first major league hit. Now ready to work here is Patrick Corbin on the mound for his fifth start of the year. Another day, another uniform for the Diamondbacks. Their third different uniform of the series, and this will miss up high and we're underway. They have a whole lot of different combinations, don't they? Yes, they do. I'd like to see the Padres after yesterday, two in the first, get something on the board and then put the pedal down and put some pressure on these D backs. Hey, win a series, right? To a team that has won every series this year, the Arizona Diamondbacks that they played in. Padres won game one behind the strength of Tyson Ross's incredible outing. Patrick Corbin, he's been good. Had Tommy John surgery. Bouncing back from that a few years ago. He's got the two seam, the four seamer. The slider is really, really nasty. He throws a curveball at times as well. Quality strike thrower with all of his pitches. And the numbers prove it. 35 strikeouts, only seven walks from this left hander. Uh, Diamondbacks people saying that uh, this is the Corbin of 14 and 15 before the Tommy John surgery. It's taken this long for him to get his stuff back. It is back in a big way. And some guys are different. Some guys bounce back very quickly. Other guys, it maybe takes a year and a half or two. To left field, Gerard Dyson to his left for the first down. Let's take a look at the Diamondbacks defense brought to you by your San Diego Cadillac dealers. For the Diamondbacks in the outfield, left to right, Dyson, Pollock, Owings on the infield, Marrero, Ahmed, Marte, and Goldschmidt. Behind the plate, Jeff Mathis. He'll be putting down the signs for Patrick Corbin. One down here in the first inning brings up Will Myers. Hey. Will Myers getting settled back in. Did not play in last night's game after starting on Friday being activated off the DL. Five for 16 in only four games. He only played three games before he went on the DL. Nerve irritation is elbow. That will just miss, and it's 2 and 0. Remember how I mentioned the slider? He'll throw that curveball. He'll wrap his slider a little bit more, and that'll make it a bigger break. And I think we just saw it right there. Well, last April, Will Myers with a home run. Uh, Patrick Corbin. Joy's taking on these Diamondbacks, 324 career average against Arizona. Taps it foul. Mention the home run. Off Corbin to Petco Park. Early in the season, April the 20th. Swing and a miss, and that fooled Myers. He strikes out two down. First K of the day for Patrick Corbin. I mentioned how that Patrick Corbin can throw that breaky ball. It's just not throwing it over the plate, it's the great location. So hard, soft, away. There's a breaking ball in. Now picture that one in the back of your mind. There's a fastball, and then he finishes him off with that 81. So 94 fastball, 81 down and in for the punch out. Two down for Villanueva betting in the three spot in today's order. Why not? He's been hot. They came hitting streak coming in, hitting at 345 to begin the year. Six homers, 14 runs batted in. Three for eight in the series. A game hitting streak, a career high for him. And during that 18, eight gamer, 13 for 25, hitting at 520 during the eight game hitting streak. And foul this one off to the right out of play. During the eight game streak, he has moved that batting average from 212 to 345, where it currently sits. It's all rookies in hits, home runs, RBIs, total bases. On the ground towards short. 
Ahmed. Sidearm toss to first in time. One, two, three, go the Padres. Diamondbacks are coming up. Lavello starting nine. Gerard Dyson in left field leading it off with Cattell Marte at second base. Paul Goldschmidt at first with A.J. Pollock in center. Chris Owings in right with Nick Ahmed at shortstop. Devin Marrero is at third base. Jeff Mathis doing the catching, catching the day game after the night game, and Patrick Corbin, the pitcher, batting out of the ninth spot. Joey Lucchese on the mound for the Padres. Scott, a report for Joey is brought to you by GMC, the left hander, always on the attack, and he's got the wipeout curve. We'll get into that a little later. It's a great pitch, fun to watch. Had a great outing last time against the Giants. Well, Dyson started the first game of the series, had last night off, and back in there today, 174 average. On the grass at third via Nueva. And of course, a year of first for Lucchese, and obviously his first start here. He's already got Coors Field out of the way. That's an important one. I was just going to mention that, and that should go a long way for the kid. At Colorado, remember six innings, four hits. He gave up two runs, no earned runs. Struck it, struck out eight Rockies. So, I think the surprise factor against these Diamondbacks, if Joey is right in that lane, and he did what he did against the Rockies and last time out against the Giants, I think he should be doing a decent job this afternoon here. Dyson kind of got jammed and flips it foul. Thanks here, one and two. Fifth career start for 24 year old Joey Lucchese. Looking for his third consecutive win. He's all rookies in strikeouts, earned run average, innings pitched. Oh, he's setting up for the churve. Did you see that in his glove? There we go. Yeah. And he went around. Strikes out Dyson for the first out here in the bottom of the first inning. Change up grip, acts like a curveball, hence the churve, and another strikeout for Joey Lucchese. There's the grip. Okay, change, grip. And everything seems to be okay right out of the chute. Well, one down here in the first inning brings up Cattell Marte, the former Seattle Mariner. Okay, starts today hitting at 220. Has a home run, eight runs batted in. Played well defensively for the Diamondbacks. And I came up as a shortstop playing second base right now here in Arizona.
started very well in April. Ten game hitting streak to begin the year hit a 302 during that time. Coming off a year in which. Hit 260 last year. Total of 73 games and first appeared in the postseason. It was a line drive base hit into right field opposite field. Tell Marte is on with one out here in the first inning. Let's check out the Padres defense behind Joey Lucchese this afternoon. The defense is brought to you by your San Diego County Ford dealers. Jose Perella, he's over at second base. First start this season, the second sacker for Jose. Rest of the infield to his right, Galvis and Short at the corners. Villanueva, Hosmer in the outfield. Caesar, Margot, Myers, and squatting like a frog today, Austin Hedges. One out, one on. Paul Goldschmidt coming up here for the Diamondbacks. Padres at double play depth up the middle. And this is in the right field for a base hit. Another opposite field hit. Marte slips around second. Throw goes there, and he's going to be out at second base. Got around second and fell. Then tried to get back, and Perella, on what was a bad throw coming in, able to corral that and tag him out. So a break for the Padres right there. Big time break. I think he had third base. He was thinking first and third action, right? Will Myers comes in. Let's check out the throw. It's a short hop. Perella picks it. Watch Marte. He, you know what? He's looking to the outfield. He has totally turned. His commitment is to third base. His head was in right field. And that's a break for San Diego. Nice pick by Jose Perella. So two down, Goldschmidt at first base, and that changes some things. For AJ Pollock, who was a big part of last night's win. You know, we talk talk about it all the time, Don. You got to pick up that third base coach, right? Yeah, he threw the brakes on, and his head was on a swivel, looking in right field. Yeah. Down he went. Pollock homered here last night. Now has five on the year to lead his club in that category. And used to seeing him near the top of the order. But uh, here he is batting fourth. Cleanup and he is cleaning up. 16 RBIs on the young season. For the Diamondback center fielder. He's homered in consecutive games. Third time in his career that that has happened. He's got ten hits at home at Chase Field, and eight of the ten have gone for extra bases. Last year, finished the year with 14 home runs in 112 games. Got good speed too. Made it first for Goldschmidt. Goldschmidt not running as much as he once did. No, he can steal you a bag, huh? He still can get one. We saw it the other night. Thinking two right out of the box. He can gallop. Diamondbacks right now going into today in the middle of the pack in the stolen base category ranked seventh in the National League. Throw over very short lead. That outfield assist incidentally for Will Myers ninth career outfield assist for Myers his first since May 6th of 2015 that was at San Francisco and of course he was playing first base last couple of years. You know the good sign is that the last two times he has had to throw the ball into the infield. Yep. He, I mean he's gotten some hair on it. So that's a good sign. Arm is feeling good. Joey Lee Casey working from the stretch here with Goldschmidt at first, two down in the first inning. Edges catching the day game after the night game. All three games of the series, and that is ball four. Whoa! Ooh. Everybody headed off the field thinking it was strike three. 
Instead, a walk for A.J. Pollock. I'll be interested to see where this ended up in the strike zone. That's a strike. Looks like it to me, right on the inside corner. Austin Hedges was on his way. It looked like uh, Joey wanted that call. Not the case. Hey, this is part of the uh, the maturation process of a young pitcher, right? You've got to eliminate that. Two outs, make a good pitch, and leave him stranded. Two on, two down, and Chris Owings will take strike one. Two seventy eight, a home run, six runs batted in for Owings. As he was involved in the collision with A.J. Pollock in the outfield, left Thursday's game. That was a finale against the Giants. Here's strike two. He's appeared 15 times in right field. That's where he is today. Owings also has started at second base twice. So guys are very versatile. And Tori Lavello will use him both in the outfield and the infield. See him play shortstop. Casey's really been able to bear down with runners in scoring position this year. Opponent just one for nine against Lucchese in this spot. I think that's his off speed stuff. Thrown at any time. A runner in scoring position. Hitters are looking for the old number one, something to turn on. Grounded foul, and it hangs at 0 2. That's the chirp right there. That's a very tough pitch to keep fair. Not much you can do with that pitch. There's the grip. Throws the spiral. Down and in. In the inner center field, hit well. Or go back onto the track at the wall to make the catch. So a drive to center, it's nothing but a loud out, scoreless. it over after one inning of work and Casey and Hedges back and forth and let's take a look at the keys of the game brought to you by your San Diego Honda dealers mighty Casey strikes them out Luke Casey taking that Casey why well leads all rookies like Don mentioned in uh, rookie pitchers and strikeouts with 25 and use bats to wax snakes plain and simple to take two out of three from these Diamondbacks who have yet to lose a series this year. Half-hearted swing there by Hosmer, kind of changed his mind in the middle, and it's down 0-1. 
And a tough night last night, 0 for 4 with four strikeouts in the game. Looking to bounce back here today in the finale of the series. Hosmer, Perella, and Galvis here in the second inning. Corbin had a 1 2 3 first on 15 pitches. Next in a strikeout of Will Myers swinging. That's away, and Corbin falls behind here 3 and 1. Oh, if the Padre hitters can lay off that breaking stuff clearly out of the zone. Hopefully they can get a pitch in the zone. Corbin having to maybe resort to a fastball and then jump all over that. That's ball four and down to first base goes Hosmer first base runner to reach for the Padres on the afternoon. Let's check in with Bob Scanlon. Well thank you Don it's time for tools of the trade brought to you by Ram trucks and the tool we're going to look at today is Patrick Corbin's slider. He's been using it much more effectively inside to the right hand batter so far this season. It's always been a good weapon for him. It's not that he's using it anymore. It's that he's locating it differently. Forty percent of the time now he's going down and into the right handers last year was only twenty six percent. Twenty seven of his thirty seven strikeouts this season on that slider guys and he's been using it very effectively to keep the right handers honest. All right Scan thanks very much. As Corbin has been dealing here coming in with a record of three and oh. One point six five earned run average into his fifth start and. Morella batting for the first time today and playing at second base today coming in from the outfield. Saw a fair amount of that during the spring left field second base. Let's check out the arsenal of left hander Patrick Corbin fastball slider curveball. Very very rare change up talk to Bob Brenly from the. Uh, Diamondbacks. He's tried a split finger grip. He's tried the circle change grip. Nothing has really felt comfortable for Corbin. That's why he kind of wraps that uh, that slider a little bit more. Kind of creates a little bit of a curveball. Lead off walk to Eric Hosmer trying to work his way around that. Balls behind Perella, two and one. Flared foul off to the right out of play. Probably thinking about a double play. Perella has hit 43 grounders this season, second most of all players. Yeah, Tell Marte who's got it into 45. And a single in the first inning last night snapped an 0 for 17. Stays alive here, two and two. Has done against lefties, hitting at 330 on the year. And all the hits pretty much early for Perella. It's 25 hits. It's tied for fifth most in the National League. Grounds one softly right side. Marte will go to second. They get the lead runner in Hosmer. One down here in the second inning. The way the momentum of the ball was headed, no one's sure Marte was going to spin and do that. He could just get the out at first, but he does get the lead runner. Nice play by Marte. On the force play, I think a lot of second basemen will go that way, realizing that you really have more time than you think because it is a force play, not a tag play. I was right there with you, Don. I thought he was going to go to first. The spin, and you could see. Plenty of time to get the lead runner. So one out, Perel at first base, and it brings up Freddie Galvis. Uh, 253 with a home run. Seven runs batted in. Batting out of the sixth spot today. 
remarkable experience with Corbin two for six against him at 333 in his career double and a triple off Corbin. Looking down to Glenn Hoffman third base coach's box. Hopefully one of those signs given to Freddie Galvis is a double in the gap. It'd be nice. They have a double in the gap sign. I think they do. <laughs> A foul ball down the right field line. Pretty sure that was not the sign. No. Hey, let me ask you something. This series, we've seen some fairly hard hit balls in the outfield, but not traveling, right? No, I don't think at all. I really think this humidor thing is it's a real a difference here. I it's really a do. real thing. It's got me a few times where I thought balls that would normally hit here before would go a lot further than they are right now. I'm right there with you. Pitch 30 coming up for Corbin, but first to check at first base on Perella. And that includes the final out of the first inning. Chris Owings long fly out to center. That had that sound to it off yes. the bat, didn't it? I mean, that's a ball that's out of here a year ago. The humidor now here, like it is at Coors Field, and they're trying it. I wonder what they keep the humidity at in that. That's a good question. 50. 50% 50 humidity, I'm told. Okay. Now one on a one two pitch coming to Galvis. It's a feet out of the way on a pitch down and in. I was not for a physics major or a physicist if you want to say that right but a baseball that's dry seemed to travel farther than one that has a little bit more moisture in it right and the 50 percent would make it a little heavier correct rather than the dry environs of being in the desert. That makes, makes sense. sense. Swing and a miss. There we go. Let's get a piece. He got a piece. Stayed alive. Indicated by home plate umpire Chad Whitson. Corbin has struck out one, walked one. And dealing with Freddie Galvis with Jose Perella at first base. Now to his lead at first, held on by Goldschmidt. Galvis strikes out on a pitch down and in. Second strikeout for Patrick Corbin, two down here in the second inning. There are sliders and then there are wipeout sliders. Man. You know, when you, when you swing as a hitter at that pitch, you're just hoping to follow it off so you get another whack at it. You can't keep that pitch fair. Speaking of swinging and missing, Donnie, look at that percentage. Highest percentage, 41.4. There's a big difference between Max Scherzer, too, 36.8, and then Corbin. Another throw over, more of a soft toss than anything else. And back to the bag without a problem is Perella. Matt Caesar getting a start today in left field. Popped up. In the shallow right, Marte going out, Owings in, and Owings takes charge, makes the catch, it ends the top of the second. Scoreless from the desert.
Time now for our Valley View Casino trivia question. Love trivia, especially on a Sunday. And the last Padres player to be named NL Rookie of the Month. Tweet us your answers by the end of the inning using hashtag Valley View Trivia. Candidates this year for that award this month yeah. for the Padres. Joey Lucchese and Christian Villanueva. Getting rookies, 345 average, six homers. 21 and two thirds, 25 Ks for Joey Fuego, who's on the mound today. Working into his second inning, Nick Ahmed leads it off and takes strike one. Here's what I look at when I look at potential candidates, rookie of the month. It's a pretty good sample size, isn't it? Yeah. You know, month. for a guy, four four starts, five starts, whatever the case may be, and then at bats. So, one of the sides has to make an adjustment. So, how's Luke Casey going to adjust? How are the hitters going to adjust against Luke Casey and Villanueva? And if they continue to keep putting up numbers like that for the month, that means these guys are making adjustments. Because word travels quickly, Donnie. You know that. With all the video and all the info they've got out there. A lot of games within the division, too, yeah. in the first month. Teams you will see much more of during the course of the year. So we'll see what adjustments they make and facing him two and three times a year. First time that he has faced the Diamondbacks and first time here at Chase Field. Dealing with six, seven, and eight for Arizona here in the second. Ahmed, Marrero, and Mathis. Bounces in well. Nice short pick. of the uh, plate. Did you see that registered? 82. And a nice pick by Austin Hedges. Spiked it. Yeah. Ahmed, known for his defense more than his offense, hitting under 200 at 193. Oh, he did it again. Slipping out of the hand, it appears, and trying to dry it off. Snapping those off well shy of the plate. Full count now. I'll tell you what, I'm sure there are some Australian and Sri Lankan cricket scouts out there watching Joey Lucas. You know, hey, we could use this guy. On the ground by the mound, softly to Perella. That's the first out of the bottom of the second inning. To me, that's an adjustment. He just spiked two pitches, and then he just dotted the bottom of the strike zone with a 90-plus mile an hour fastball. So one out here in the second, and Devin Marrero coming up. Mentioned it last night. One of five players from Arizona State to actually play in the big leagues for the Diamondbacks. Last year in 71 big league games with the Red Sox. And a 2 11. Fired by the Diamondbacks last week of spring training from Boston for a player to be named later or cash. The deal went down on March the 24th. Sometimes you see those late spring training deals or pickups for that matter after players get released that last week of spring training. Down the right field line and foul. The competitions are over and you figure out where your team's going to be. And a couple guys left off the roster and become available. Yeah, I think the timing's got to be right because it's a tough time. They're rounding out the rosters, as you said, and it's got to be that one special player. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a, a utility guy who could fill a number of roles. Curve grip. And a swing and a miss. Baffled was Marrero. See when Joey Fuego goes really high before a set, he sets his grip up there. And we have the luxury of the center field camera to look into that glove. And he'll set it up when he's atop of his uh, wind up position. At the apex? At apex, good word. Watch right here. See? Oh, That's yeah. a fastball grip. That 
92 look harder than 92? To me, it does. Late life? Yeah. Firm. Thirtieth pitch of the day for Luke Casey. Looks like they're going to try to come in. And a swing and a miss. Kind of a mislocation, but that'll work. It's strikeout number two for Luke Casey. Two down. That's the beauty of being sneaky, having some deception in your delivery. Even though you miss, and this is a good miss because it's up and away. Not really much you can do there. That's a 90 mile an hour fastball swung on and missed. He wanted to bury that one inside. Two down here in the second inning. Jeff Mathis coming up. Catching the day game after the night game. Four for 19 so far in the season into his ninth game of the year. Vila caught game one. John Ryan Murphy catches game two and Jeff Mathis catches the third game of the series. So three catchers in three games for Tori Lovello. That's another nice luxury to have. If one of those catchers you could, you know, put on the infield to spell somebody, maybe put him in the outfield. Two and one. And a big cut there by Mathis, the veteran. Known mostly for his defensive work as a catcher. Evens up at two and two. Fastball kind of running away. They like that high fastball, don't they? Away. Mm -hmm. They're chasing. Marrero did, and now Mathis, same thing. Here's that area, Don, that fastball for Luke Casey, right? 90 91. They've been fishing for that. You go churve here. Oh, yeah. Full count now. Get a better look at that grip. He goes at the top. What was it? The uh, the apex? Apex. See, watch a circle change grip. Bring that index finger down by the thumb. There it is. That's a great shot, guys. Foul back to the screen. We'll do it again. Three and two. Nick Ahmed to ground out at second base. Devin Marrero struck out swinging. Two down here in the inning. Full count to Mathis with the pitcher Patrick Corbin winning on deck with the Diamondbacks batting here in the last of the second inning. To center field, Margot going back will have room. That makes the catch well shy of the warning track to end the inning through two from Arizona. No score.
12th no hitter in athletics history. A couple of walks mixed in there, 10 strikeouts for him. And no hitter last night against the red hot Red Sox, who had been 17 and 2. Able to no hit them last night. Some controversial plays in that uh, no hitter. Uh, an error that was handed out that very well could have been a hit. And then a, a base running and baseline rule coming into effect on the first baseline here of Andrew Benintendi. Yeah, okay, now we're going to slow it down for you because once that ball is touched by the fielder, you create the line from the runner to the base. That's the base path he's created. And there's three feet each side of the runner. Now, it starts when the fielder with the ball attempts the tag. According to the umpire, at first it looked like the first base umpire signaled safe. He misses with the tag. According to the umpire's judgment call, they gather. They call him out, saying that he was out of the baseline. It's a very tricky rule. It's a judgment call. There's a lot going on. And here's what the rule states. I think the important thing is a runner's base path is established when the tag attempt occurs and is a straight line from the runner to the base he is attempting to reach safely. And it's ironic because it's the fielder who establishes the runner's baseline. As soon as that ball is caught in his attempt, the, the moment he attempts, with the tag, bang. That's when the baseline is created and the three feet either side is created. And it's the job of the umpire to determine in his judgment whether the runner eludes that three foot gap either way of the established baseline. Lead off single here for Austin Hedges to left field. It's the second hit allowed in the last 11 innings pitch for Corbin. And Hedges, who has been snake bitten lately, a lot of line drives of people here getting a base hit to open up the third inning. Well, Austin needed that. You know, Austin Hedges, you know, we have the luxury of being around him each and every day, and he's a pro at what he does. He works hard, comes to the ballpark, goes over the scouting reports, doesn't hang his head. He realizes, you know, hey, catching, that's the number one, but still, you know, when you're not swinging the bat like you hope you could be doing, yeah, that, that could get to you. First hit of the day for the Padres and second straight inning they've had that lead runner on Hosmer had walked in the second inning to get it started. Casey okay, so already squaring and punched at it for strike two. Mm, not a good technique right there. Well for eight in his big league career. Offered at it again and strikes out. Third strikeout for Patrick Corbin. One down here in the third inning, and it's time now to answer our Valley View Casino trivia question from earlier. Name the last Padres player to be named NL Rookie of the Month. Ryan Schiff, July of 2016. I forgot about. It. Yeah, ended Ryan up with Schiff. 20 home runs. Yeah. Boy, he went on a tear, didn't he? Yes, he did. In there for strike one to Margot. Second time through this Padres order now for Patrick Corbin. Margot lined out sharply to left fielder Gerard Dyson in the first inning. Margot just activated off the DL after being hit in the ribs. In Colorado, and yeah, Hunter Renfro go on the DL, so it's kind of worked out there. We wonder what was going to happen in the outfield. Ends up a DL scenario for Renfro. See, that's another thing that I think is interesting. He'd been hurting for a while, right? Yes. I mean, these guys get nicked up, and if they go out there, they answer the bell, and they're not 100%. I mean, how many guys, Don, are really at 100%? No. E even though we're only on April 22nd. Yeah, right? already some pain going on. Yeah. Playing hurt. Edges at first, one down here in the third inning. One two coming to Margot. Slices it foul back to the screen. 
Well, it seems to me early on when the Padres get a Corbin fastball, they're late on it. And follow some fastballs off. As Will Myers waiting on deck. Trying to pick up that outside corner. Evans uh, two and two. We you know the record coming in with a 1.65 earned run average. Fifth start for Corbin. Nothing else. That pitch count is rising. There's a grounder foul. Yeah, foul balls on that slider down into the righties. That'll get that pitch count up. Two time 14 game winner, Patrick Corbin. 14 and 13, 14 and 17. First in opponent on base percentage, opposition slugging percentage. Yeah, not a lot of uh, extra base hits off of Corbin. Swing and a miss, and Margot strikes out back to back K's for Corbin, four in all. As we check back in with Bob. Well, thank you, Don. There's no doubt that Corbin's slider down and in has been a nasty weapon, but the pattern so far has been basically away early. Here you see them go fastball away, then a slow breaking ball on the outside corner. One pitch inside, and then it goes fastball away again. Now, with the two strike situation, now he tries to go down in on Will Myers to put him away, and he puts it in there. So, guys, basically it's been away, away, away. Try to go inside late. Let's see if he works that pattern again this time to Will. Two down, and Myers was a strikeout victim in the first. So the check on Hedges at first. All four of Corbin's strikeouts on the slider. Relatively short lead at first base for Hedges. Myers a ground one back to the mound. Corbin fields and tosses underhanded to end the inning. Padres leave a runner, scoreless to two and a half. Live on Fox, join Troy Eggman and Joel Klatt in Dallas for all the big picks. April 26th and 27th, live on Fox and NFL Network. Last half of the third inning, back at Chase Field and back on the hill, Joey Lucchese. We're dealing with the opposing pitcher here first, and Patrick Corbin lead it off in the home half of the third inning.
thirty seven pitches through two for Lucchese. High strike call for strike one. If you can get 15 or fewer pitches an inning, I think you're pretty good. You know, we could find this out, but I believe it was last year or the year before. The average pitches per inning at the major league level was 16.5 pitches per inning. So times that by seven. I mean, I'm not good at math, but 16 times seven. Let's see, seven times six is 12. So. <laughs> In the dirt. One and two here to Corbin. 286 hitter this year. It's taking a really long time to get the answer. <laughs> you have a calculator on your phone there? 112? I think 112. Didn't realize it was going to be a quiz. It's grounded foul over by the Padres dugout. Yeah, roughly 112 because it's 16.5, right? So you have to add. So you get seven innings. Seven, out of your guy. so that's three and yeah. a half. So total, roughly 115, right? Well, really, it shouldn't be roughly. I mean, if yeah, 16, yeah, yeah 16 and a half would be 115. <laughs> so, but that you know that doesn't take into consideration. You know, you got the five pitch inning where you get a lot of action, ground balls, right? Strike three, Corbin strikes out third K for Lucchese of the day. One down. See, now this is the type of discussion where, you know, this is the kind of discussion, seriously, like like during the course of a ball game, guys will be sitting on the bench and, you know, they're watching the game and they're, you know, checking. It's, it's scoreless, there's only three hits, but, you know, they're. You know, gosh, you know, look at the pitch count. How many pitches did he throw? Hey, by the way, did you know that the, 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 what's the major league average for pitches in inning? 15 uh, yeah or 16.5 so, yeah, sorry and this, that's the kind of discussion that during a ball game hey we're talking baseball right so these are the kinds of things you'd be talking about in the bullpen yeah yeah Down and in, and Dyson getting his second look at Lucchese. Struck out swinging in the first, one of three strikeouts for Lucchese. In there for a strike, and it's one and two. Did you notice the booth cameras in the third different location in three games? I did notice that. It's moving around this booth. What's going on? Do you like the location it is now? Not especially. <laughs> it's very low. This one foul back the screen. I actually prefer if it is higher because it makes our faces I thinner and this way. More thicker hair. If it's shooting down, you know. Right. Up like this, it's all kind of jowly, you know. <laughs> Just a thought. I don't know. Yeah. You know, I'm not, not know. my job. Should be a little higher. Yeah. One two is high, and it's two and two. There's no real good angle <laughs> of me, so I'm not sure, sure it matters. I mean, Up again, and he's missed. It's been up. Full count. Let's see if he has confidence in that churb or goes back with nobody on base to try to locate a fastball. And if you're watching at home, when he goes high into his delivery, as we mentioned, you know, you can kind of peek into his glove. If you see that circle change up grip, you know what it's going to be. And the sign from Austin is the fastball away. And you see the fastball grip. On the ground, George Perell at second base. Two outs here in the third inning. Perfectly located fastball and a fastball count. And that bodes well for Joey Lucchese. Tell Marte coming up here. He has 
one of two hits today for the Diamondbacks. His hit was a single to right. Fiftieth pitch of the day coming up here for Joey Lucchese. Popped up. Over goes Hedges by the screen and it hits the screen. No did, play. Did that hit the wire? I think so. On top of the screen. That's a play that uh, may have made before the screens were extended. Two down in the third. And another chance here for Marte. Just missed. That inside one and one. Well, Marte signing a five year contract with two club options with the Diamondbacks. On March the 27th. He'll be here a while. That's a nice little uh, security, right? Yes. For Marte, right? Took care of it right before the regular season started. Casey in a stretch right now where he's retired six Diamondbacks in a row. And Marte lunging after that pitch. Just came out of his shoes after that. Two and two. Swing and a miss, and that's strikeout number four for Joey Lucchese. He's retired seven in a row without a score from the desert. It's time for the Kia drive to success. Major League leaders, active hit streaks. Villanueva coming in with an eight game hitting streak. Grounded out his first time up. 15 is the active lead for Brian Dozier, second baseman for the Minnesota Twins. Villanueva trying to keep it going here today. Grounded to short in the first. Here he is to lead off the fourth inning. Followed by Hosmer and Perella.
One hit so far today for the Padres. Only two for the Diamondbacks. Corbin has walked a batter and struck out four. That's a strike two and one. We have thought it was low. It was that sweeper. Kind of wraps it a little bit more at 70. Kind of wrap it a little bit more. Bigger break. Just missed. Full count now. Well, since the debut for Vienna Wave of last season, September the 18th. Of last year, 344 average. Not this time, though, he strikes out. And that's five strikeouts for Corbin, who comes back to get him. Well, the pitch prior to this one was that harder breaking ball. And there it is again at 80. He went 70 with the soft breaking ball, 80 down and in with the hard breaking ball for the strikeout. One out here in the fourth inning, and it brings up Eric Hosmer. Walked in the second inning. The walk served up by Corbin. We've got ourselves a good old fashioned pitcher's duel in the Valley of the Sun this afternoon. As advertised. In that corner. Check swing. Did he go? No. Check with Mike DeMiro, third base umpire. Now Hosmer hitting at 344 on the road. 11 for 32. So far, 188 at Petco Park. Fouls it off down by the shoe tops and evens at 2 and 2. Last night snapped a three game hitting streak. Two two from Corbin on the ground foul outside of first. We'll do it again. Yeah, that was one of the few breaking balls down there. Really caught a lot of the plate. Looks like Eric was out in front of it a little bit though. Let's check it out. He wants it down and away, right? That's middle in. That's that's danger zone. Swing and a miss, and a 93 mile an hour fastball strikes out Eric Hosmer. It's six strikeouts for Corbin now. Well, the ideal thing for any pitcher is to go hard and soft on a hitter and get him off balance. Try to avoid the sweet spot. During this at bat, one pitch where he had something to work with. Starts him off hard, misses four seamer, four seamer, another four seamer. Right? Now he's going soft there. There's the breaking ball. It probably could have done some damage. Two of them, in fact. And then, bang. Once again, this with location in, still got the strikeout. Two down here in the fourth inning, and Jose Perella bounced into a fielder's choice in the second inning, and it's his second look at Corbin. So far, the Padres have not been able to do anything against Corbin second time through. Four batters so far, three of them have struck out. And Margot, Villanueva, and Hosmer. Slow breaking ball drops in there for a strike. Five in a row retired by Corbin now. Six strikeouts on the day. Just on the corner, maybe. Got the call. Three and two. Wow. With the catcher set up inside, off the plate, still gets it. 
to left center field. Pollock on the move and in the slide. Makes the catch in left center. Nice play by A.J. Pollock. Had to cover a lot of ground. Goes in the slide. Makes the grab that ends. Top of the fourth inning. We're scoreless in Arizona. You buy Cadillac. Visit your San Diego Cadillac dealers today. By Petco, the pet company. And by Hyundai. Get a great deal on more than a great deal on an all new Hyundai. See your Hyundai dealer today. Scoreless as we head into the bottom of the fourth inning. Well pitched ball game today. Joey Lucchese for the Padres. Patrick Corbin for the Diamondbacks. And Paul Goldschmidt leads it off here in the home half of the fourth inning against Joey Lucchese. Yeah, second time around, let's see what happens here. The adjustment for the hitters, how Joey goes after this heart of the lineup. Goldie, Pollock, and Owings. The Padres starting pitching. He's not allowed a run in the first three innings for the seventh time this year in the first 23 games. When they don't allow a run in the first three innings, the Padres are three and three. Well, as the weather heats up in the valley, so does Paul Goldschmidt, huh? He's one of those perennial players, though. You can pretty much pencil in numbers, right? Yep, you know what you're going to get by season's end. You will get there. 36 home runs a year ago. Reaches out and fouls this off to the right out of play. I love his swing. Strong, short, compact, all fields. Foul pole to foul pole. Seven opening day starts for him. Club record for a first baseman and second most on the club. Only behind Luis Gonzalez, who made eight opening day starts. Oh, we got squeezed. You know, as a pitcher, you're taught to pound the strike zone down like that. Go up the ladder by design, right? In there for a strike and battling back, Luke Casey. Full count. Richmond started the series 0 for 5 with a walk, but since then gone 3 for 3. And a single in the first inning today. Pitch 60 coming up for Lucchese. Turf. Goldschmidt takes it for ball four downstairs. 
Second walk allowed by Lucchese today starts the bottom of the fourth inning. This is why players like Paul Goldschmidt are just world class athletes hand eye coordination Don I'm a firm believer that that was a very offerable pitch right three and two you've got to protect but maybe you know Paul Goldschmidt he's not only just watching his at bat he's watching against Marte Owings he's watching through and through and he might have saw, seen that ball out of his grip and saying you know what I see that break I see the the way it's out of his hand I'm going to lay off hence ball four he's that good. Here's A.J. Pollock who walked in the first inning. First time of the game that the Diamondbacks have had the lead runner on. It's Goldschmidt at first held on by Eric Hosmer. Check on him and Goldschmidt back to the bag. Swing and a miss. On a strike now to Pollock. Jay Pollock getting his fifth home run of the year here last night. Big part of last night's win. Don, regarding that churve, mm -hmm. thanks to our outstanding statistician Russ, only seven of 21 churves have been in the strike zone today, meaning he's got him swinging out of the zone. He's got him fishing for it. On the ground through a vacated right side into right field. Goldschmidt takes second, and the Diamondbacks have something going here in the fourth inning. A walk and a single, runners at first and second. Well, exactly what happened in the first inning runners at first and second, but flip flopped. First inning, base hit, walk. Fourth inning, walk, base hit. But the only difference, there were two outs in that first inning. He's got some work to do with nobody out in runners at first and second. Chris Owings, who flied out to the warning track in center field in the first inning, gets his second look at Lucchese. Takes strike one. Had 12 home runs last year. 51 runs driven in. Again, he was involved in the collision with A.J. Pollock here on Thursday out in left center field. Those two colliding and left Thursday's game. In fact, with a head contusion, took a knee to the head. It's a back in there. We've seen him in the series already. And today getting a start in right field for Tori Labello. Left by Lucchese, no throw. Every team needs a guy like Chris Owings. Started at a different position on opening day in each of the last four seasons. 14 shortstop, 15 second, 16 center field, 17 shortstop. Fly ball to right center field. Margot back towards the track and onto it to make the catch. Tagging is Goldschmidt at second. He'll move to third with now one down. Second time in this game, Owings has flown out here to the warning track. Had that sound again, did it, Don? It did. But Margot was tracking it all the way to right center field onto the warning track. You know, may have gotten in on a little bit and working underneath, but still. Manuel catches, turns towards the glove side. That runner's going to tag with the key. Get it in quickly to second base. Keep that runner at first base. Got that double play in order. First and third, one down, and Nick Ahmed coming up. 
I'm, at, I'm sorry, Donnie. Go ahead. I was just going to say, he grounded out first time up. And you know that's a good thing because you know he leads the Diamondbacks in grounding in the double plays with three. So I hope we can get him to hit one on the ground. Take your chances. Goldschmidt at third, Pollock at first. One out of the inning. Heads up left side of the infield on this churf. Taken off, throwing oh. over there, throwing it away is Lucchese. From third comes Goldschmidt. Pollock is going to go to third and throw the brakes on. They had him picked off with Pollock taking off at first base. But an errant throw by Lucchese up over the head of Hosmer produces a run for the Diamondbacks. Goldschmidt scores. An error charge to the KC and it's one nothing Arizona. Oh, he had him as you mentioned. He had committed. Eric Cosmer coming off the bag, trying to create a throwing lane to second base. There it is, the wild throw. Oh, just maybe working under it a little bit, maybe kind of rushing it, knowing that when he made that commitment to first base, he knew the runner was going. That hurts. Infield in all the way around now with Pollock at third. Ahmed to deep left. Down the line towards the corner, and that ball is gone. Two run home run for Nick Ahmed. And in a blink of an eye, it is three to nothing Diamondbacks. This has happened quickly. Into the swing path of Nick Ahmed. It's the churf. And we talk about location, especially an off speed pitch, lefty on righty coming into the hitter, right? That was right in the swing path into the Diamondbacks bullpen. Casey trying to grab his bearings here. This one has gotten away from him pretty quickly. Devin Marrero. The home run, the 23rd career home run for Nick Ahmed. First time he's ever homered against the Padres. Side for ball two, two and one. Seventy one pitches now for Lucchese. Through three and a third innings. Inning started with a walk by Paul Goldschmidt. Single by Pollock. And Pollock takes off. He's credited with a stolen base. Aaron throw from Lucchese scores Goldschmidt. Pollock takes third. Ahmed with a two run shot, and all of a sudden it's three to nothing. Diamondbacks. That's a strike and a full count now. Wow, he got a call there. Framed for a long time by Hedges, but it is ball four, and that is walk number three allowed by Lucchese. And here comes Darren Balsley trying to calm down his young starting pitcher. We're going to go back to that ball off the bat of Nick Ahmed. Look where Austin Hedges is set up. 
and then look where he has to go to get it and on contact where Nick Ahmed on the turf gets it right down the heart of the plate. That's a classic example of speeding up a hitter's bat. Slower the pitch enables the hitter more time to get that barrel out front connect to it and he sent it on its way for the home run. Just poor location doesn't mean you can't throw that pitch. He just has to locate better. Still one out here in the inning. Jeff Mathis, the catcher coming up here. Marrero at first base, held on over there by Hosmer. There goes Marrero and a swing and a miss. No throw from Hedges. Stolen base for Marrero as the Diamondbacks keep the pressure on. Well, this is something uh, Tori Lavello likes to do, right? Put pressure on the defense. Pretty aggressive manager. The the opposition by putting runners in motion. You have to have the roster to be able to do that. Yes. He seems to. A lot of guys you can run. So now, runner in scoring position for Mathis. Fly out to center field in the second inning. Go for one today. Veteran Diamondbacks catcher. Been a taxing inning for Lucchese. The Diamondbacks with runners in scoring position in the series. Five for 13. A triple and a home run. Mathis has got a runner out there at second base in Marrero. In there for a strike. <laughs> Thank you. You have to credit Austin Hedges yep. too sometimes, right? And bottom of strike right there. Sure. Pitch 25 coming up of this inning for Lucchese. And a grounder foul. Tony Paris Chica, third base coach for the Diamondbacks, skipping a little rope. He is out of the coach's box, down the line. Watching the middle infielders. On the ground towards shortstop, Galvis is going to go to first, and out there is Mathis. Marrero is kind of running in front of Galvis and he elected not to go to third base, went to first, two down. A tag play at third. I was thinking the same thing. Freddie was going to his right a little bit, having to round that baseball correctly, right? Let's take a look. He's playing deep at short. He's coming in. Uh, you know what? He could have had him. He could have had him on a good throw. Grounder up the middle, in the center field. From third comes Marrero, and that's run number four for the Diamondbacks here in the fourth inning. They lead it for nothing. Well, Corbin helping himself out with a single back up the middle. You know what? I will say this about that Galvis play. He went to first, right? And I have no problem with that. You know why? Pitcher's coming up. When it, I've always been a firm believer, when in doubt, get the out. He got the out, two outs. Basically challenging the Diamondbacks. Hey, your pitcher's coming up. I'm going to have to have your guy drive him in. And it worked out for the Diamondbacks. But we don't know if it would have been a perfect throw to, to third base for the tag play to get that runner. Just a thought. Nice in the eighth member of the Diamondbacks to bat in the inning. Struck out and grounded out. 0 for 2. Nice. 
Well, this uh, up to this point, particular point, it's been the case of one bad pitch. It was the hanging breaking ball to Nick Ahmed. 30 pitches in the inning. It's been a long one. Stirring in the Padres pen right now. I should say one bad pitch and one errant throw. It's Makita who is up. Now whether that got to Lucchese or not remains to be seen. Can he erase that from his memory and just go after these Diamondback hitters? Well, the one breaking ball. Line to third and picked by Villanueva to end a tough inning for Lucchese and the Padres. Four nothing Diamondbacks. Four times in the bottom of the fourth inning. And long wait for Patrick Corbin. He doesn't mind. Still put together four runs, including an RBI single for himself. Big time cushion for Patrick Corbin. And, uh, he's in complete control. And we recap that fourth inning for Joey Lucchese. You know, the one thing that sticks out, obviously, is that pickoff, right? They had him. They had Pollock. He threw it away. He did get the next hitter to fly out to center field. And then the one bad pitch to Nick Ahmed. The three run shot. And you know, then that's when that's when the pitch total started to really kind of add up. I think the I think the pitch count, quite personally, I think the pitch count maybe affected him a little bit more than that throw. Because he got the next hitter out, fly ball to center field. A 32 pitch inning for him, 86 total through four innings. For the Galvis, Matt Caesar, Austin Hedges expected here in the fifth. Padres have work to do. Fly ball to right, and Owings going back and over to make the catch. He runs onto the track for out number one. It's now seven in a row, retired by Corbin. As the first out of the fifth. Left fielder, Matt Caesar. We'll start today for Matt Caesar in the outfield getting started left. Flight out to right and Chris Owings in the second inning. Slices it foul off to the right out of play. Only one hit so far today for the Padres. Austin Hedges with a single to left in the third. 
Osmer reached on a walk in the second. Corbin has been very good. Very sharp today and 70 pitches deep here, four and a third into his outing. Swing and a miss, and Caesar strikes out seven strikeouts for Corbin. Eight batters in a row retired by Corbin. Some awkward swings on that Corbin breaking ball. Awkward and uncomfortable. And I think the Diamondbacks, on the other hand, have done a good job of recognizing and kind of laying off that breaking ball from Joey Lucchese. The one at bat that really sticks out is the uh, Marrera at bat in that fourth inning, right? When he threw that walk. Hedges singled his first time up. Again, he's got the only Padres hit today. Headley has come out on deck to bat for Lucchese, but Lucchese in case has got his helmet on and he's ready to hit in case they decide to keep him in. Swing and a miss, and Hedges strikes out. Eight strikeouts for Corbin. He's retired nine in a row for nothing, Arizona. Diamondbacks lead the Padres four to nothing. It's a whole new ball game with RBI Baseball 18. RBI Baseball 18 delivers an all new franchise mode and much more. RBI Baseball 18 is available now. Learn more at rbigame.com. Rated E for everyone. With Casey back on the mound, 86 pitches deep into his outing, ready to work here in the bottom of the fifth inning. After a four run fourth inning, Patel Marte, Paul Goldschmidt, AJ Pollock, two, three, and four for Arizona coming up, and that's strike one. Diamondbacks have left three on, Padres have left two on. Del Marte with a single to right in the first, struck out swinging in the third. There's strike two. Let's see if Lucchese can have a bounce back inning here and work his way through the fifth. 
And the third time through the order for the left hander. Azuhisa Nikita had been up last inning. And Headley, if it got that far, was going to hit for Lou Casey, but Edges struck out to end the inning, so Casey back out there. Fouled off by Marte. Heavy workload in the fourth, pitch count wise. Keep it on location this inning. Okay, here comes a fastball in. Let's see if he can get it in there. Fights it off on the ground towards Perella. For out number one at the bottom of the fifth inning. That was nice. The velocity at 88. It's been about 90, 91. Velocity down a little bit, but great location tying them up for the weak grounder. Paul Goldschmidt, who has been aboard twice today. Single to right, a walk, came around to score in the fourth inning. It's gotten better as the series has gone on. Started the series 0 for 5, now 3 for his last 3. Batting with one out, base is empty. Bounces in two and one. Casey came into this outing two and zero oh with a 1.66 earned run average. It's his fifth start in the big leagues. This is a big pitch right here. Yep. I think with the pitch count. Andy Green watching every single pitch Darren Balsley looks like he's going to go to the phone there. But that uh, that last pitch I think was apparent with the location kind of spiked a little bit. Drops in there for a strike full count. Very nice. Going off speed three and one. AJ Pollock waiting on deck here for the Diamondbacks in the fifth. Inside ball four, and he loses Goldschmidt, who's on for the third time today. That's the fourth walk given up by Luke Casey. Darren Ballsley back to the phone. Again, they had Mikita up last inning. And see who is going to get up in the pen right now. It is Mikita. Back up again. One out, one on, and AJ Pollock coming up. Pollock walked in the first, single to right in the fourth. Stole a base and scored on the air and throw. Bounces in for ball one. Not liking the location of the last few pitches of uh, Casey. And hopefully, he makes a good pitch and rolls something over with a chance to turn to. Diving back is Goldschmidt. Tough to turn to on Pollock with the speed. Yeah. Marte grounded out to begin the inning. Goldschmidt walks and now Pollock trying to add on to what is a 4 0 Diamondbacks lead here in the fifth.
in the air to left field. That's Caesar back a few steps. Makes the catch. Goldschmidt bluffs as if he's going to tag and head to second. And he pulls up and retraces his steps back to the bag at first with now two down. Right field. Next pitch will be 100 for the Casey here with two down in the fifth. And he's gotten Owings to fly out to center field twice this afternoon. Both times of the warning track. And this is probably his last hitter, regardless. No doubt. Owings flew out to the warning track in center in the first, then right center in the fourth. Both times, Manuel Margot up to the task. For the first and Goldschmidt back. Go over towards right center for Owings to go the other way. Ball's behind here, one and oh. Owings has been patiently awaiting a pitch while Luke Casey checking on Goldschmidt a few times. Jumping out to that lead again. Balls behind 2 0. Well, like I said, hit, walk, get him out, last hitter. There's a strike two and one. Well, Casey had three shutout innings heading into the fourth, faced eight batters, four of them scored. It's a 32 pitch inning. Now up over 100 with two outs here in the fifth. Owings lifts a fly ball down the right field line. Myers headed over into foul ground and almost overran that. Makes the catch down the right field line that ends the fifth. Four nothing Arizona.
Slider down and in by Patrick Corbin to right hand batters, and that prediction certainly turned out to be true. Manny Moore going to on strikes. Carlos Villanueva also sliders down and in all day long. Seven strikeouts on the day for Patrick Corbin, six of them to right hand batters, all of them on the slider down and in. Guys, it's a vicious pitch. Even when you know it's coming, you still can't get to it. All right, Scan, thanks very much. As Chase Headley pinch inning here for Luke Casey. Opens up the sixth inning. Corbin has had eight K's in all. Five starts this season. He's got eight K's so far today. And out ahead of this is Headley, and he fractured the bat on that swing. Hey, that's good stuff from uh, Bob Scanlon. So now you have to ask the question as a hitter, what do you do, right? Well, that's where it gets tricky because you better have good hand eye coordination. You better have good recognition of that pitch to know when to lay off and when not to lay off. And that's hard to do. And every hitter's different. Well, last year only reached eight strikeouts in eight of 32 starts. This year, eight K's in all five starts, and he's not done yet. So he's thrown 77 pitches, working here in the sixth. And that'll miss. He's retired nine Padres in a row as he opens up this sixth inning. Headley will ground it foul. I mean, you have less than a second, right? To make a determination whether you're going to swing or not. Mm -hmm. Now you equal movement into the equation. And then you have location into that equation. And you've got that biting slider down and in. Like there. I mean, if you if you take it, you don't know if it's going to be on the corner, if it's going to be off the plate a little bit. Should I take it because it's a ball? I, with two strikes, you have I, I don't think you have any other chance than to try to at least follow it off, to try to get another pitch. That is strikeout number nine for Corbin. Most he's had this year. He had 12 strikeouts against LA. And a win back on the 4th of April. One out and Manuel Margot, 0 for 2 today, is lined out to left and struck out swinging. Corbin five and seven in his career against the Padres with 4.48 earned run average. This is a guy who is healthy. Mm -hmm. Two years removed from Tommy John surgery and dealing now. Nine strikeouts today. He's retired ten in a row. You said the key word, healthy. Yes. Because after that Tommy John surgery, he came back at 15, a couple of stops in the minor leagues, six and five record with a 3 6 ERA, but only 85 innings. Last year, 14 game winner. Look at that. Margo strikes out. That's 10 for Corbin. Second time today, Mark goes down by way of the K. Okay, now what? Put your put yourself in the shoes of, of this hitter, Manuel Margot. That that's probably one of the I use the term fattest pitch because it's right that that one ended up down the heart of the plate. But he opens up on it, swings over the top of it. If you take it, it's a called strike. That was his one shot to really do something with that pitch. Will Myers. We'll take ball one. Ten strikeouts for Corbin. Nine on sliders. He's retired 11 now in a row. And a grounder foul. Evens the count of one and one. Casey was hit for this inning, so the day done. Up going five, giving up four runs. Walk four, struck out four. Myers down one and two. Four strikeouts in a row for Corbin, who's jumped ahead here one and two. A 
first time out for Corbin a one hit shutout against the Giants. Swing and a miss this one gets a long way away from Mathis so and Myers is going to reach. So a strikeout and we'll see probably a wild pitch. Allowing Myers to reach that strikeout number 11 but. It's not the final out here of the sixth inning. He could strike out four in the inning. Wild pitch, swing and miss, hot potato, gotta go. This should be in a wave of 0 for 2. Rounded out short in the first, struck out swinging in the fourth inning. Myers with a lead over at first, held on by Goldschmidt. Foul back out of play. So in the last 14 and two thirds innings pitch for Corbin between the Giants and the Padres, he's allowed two hits and 14 and two thirds. You see his body language right now. I mean, he's going after these hitters. He smells each and every out. He's going after these guys like it's their last hitter. He wants to wipe them out, put them away. He's on a mission. He gets that ball. He gets right up on top of that hill. Two down, Myers at first. 0 and 2 to Villanueva. Gets a piece, stays alive. Back to that slider again, yep. trying to finish him off. And, and once again, recognition, according to Christian Villanueva, out of the hand, that pitch looks close enough to where I have to offer at it. When you look at it, he fouled it off, and it was still off the plate. In the air to right field. Owings going back onto the track at the wall. That ball is gone. A two run home run for Villanueva takes it the other way. Gets his seventh home run of the year. And here come the Padres. Well, nice turn of events here after what appeared to be strike three to Myers would have been. If not for the wild pitch, Myers reaches giving being away for that chance to hit the two run home run. Big time mistake being away, but taking advantage of it. It's a fastball after slider, slider, 0 2. Going opposite field, that's coming through big time. That's a great at bat for Christian being away. Mike Butcher, the pitching coach out there to talk to Corbin here. You know, I'm surprised he went to the fastball there. Not so much surprised with the fastball, but the location of the fastball, 0 2. Maybe it's not really he really wanted it. You can see he's rattled. He's still shaking his head, kicking himself. So 4 2 now. Diamondbacks on top. Corbin had been untouchable. It's just touched for a two run home run by Christian Villanueva, his seventh of the year. There's Hosmer who will take ball one. Hosmer walked in the second, struck out swinging in the fourth inning. A home run by Villanueva, just the second Padres hit today. One and two. Tail of the tape, 434 feet on the home run by Villanueva. Check swing by Hosmer didn't go. What was that tail of the tape? 434. Oh, I'm I'm not buying that. It's 378. Just to the left of that, and just went over the wall. 
I don't know what to tell you. This one is out in front of the plate and thrown out at first base. Hosmer is gone. So are the Padres. But two run home run for Villanueva. Padres back in it. Christian Villanueva with his seventh of the year. It's 4 2 now. Diamondback. Four two Diamondbacks on top of the Padres with the Padres jumping back in this game again with a two run shot from Christian Villanueva. New pitcher on Kazuhisa Makita. Well last outing was against the Dodgers back on the 18th. It was one inning gave up a hit. New lick new lick new look for this Diamondback lineup. Of the hand of Makita. 81 tops on the fastball. Breaking ball about 58 or so. His 10th game, high ERA. He had that one out and gave about four runs. Ahmed to left, and Caesar on the move will get there on the sinking liner. Makes the catch for the first out of the sixth inning. That's not an easy play. That ball is hooking towards the line off the right handed bat of Ahmed. We know that Matt Caesar's got some good speed. How about the first jump? Contact. Ball is hooking. Breaks it down. One down here in the sixth inning, and here's Devin Marrero. Strikeout victim in the second, walked and scored in the fourth inning. Now Makita in for Lucchese. With five innings, five hits, four runs, walked four, struck out four, and finished up throwing 103 pitches. That 69 mile an hour breaking ball. Yep. To right field, Myers coming in to make the catch. Two down. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the San Diego Padres. I may not be reproduced, retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Diego Padres. Two down in the sixth, and it'll bring up Jeff Mathis. Line out to center in the second, grounded out to short in the fourth inning. And Andy Green did not use Makita during spring training against any National League West team, so it's the first look that the Diamondbacks are getting. It's a great strategy. Pitches uphill with movement.
David Peralta has come out on deck for Patrick Corbin. If we get that far. There are two outs in the inning. Peralta started the first two games of the series, leading off. They're on the bench until now. Look out. Down goes Mathis. Full count for Mathis with two outs, bases empty. And a swing and a miss. Makita able to strike out Mathis to end the sixth inning. To the seventh, we go 4 2 Diamondbacks. Both starters started very well in this game. Patrick Corbin mowing him down as Corbin would end up with a total of 11 strikeouts. The errant throw by Lucchese got it started really for the Diamondbacks. One run in, and then there's two run shot down the left field line. Made it 3 0 D backs. Back come the Padres, though, trailing 4 0 this home run opposite field for Christian Villanueva. Makes it 4 2 on his seventh of the year. KC charged with four runs and five innings pitch. Most runs he's given up in any outing so far in the big leagues. And Patrick Corbin done after six innings, which he threw an even 100 pitches. Nick Ahmed with that two run shot. And it's to the top of the seventh inning we go. Yoshu Hisa Murano now into the game. This kid has held opponents scoreless in seven of nine outings. This being his tenth game. Six strikeouts, only one walk. Always going from the stretch. To third and picked on the back end by Herrero. The ball almost played him, but he makes the nice pick and retires Perella for the first out of the seventh. Let's watch him see how he backs up a little bit. Two hands it. Plants that back foot and still gets him by about three strides. So Hirano getting the first out here. And it brings up Freddie Galvis. Struck out, fly to right. He right now has got a four seamer slider and a split. Mm -hmm. 
Galvis will foul it off back to the backstop. Padres still with only two hits today. That was all Corbin gave up in his six innings of work. A single by Hedges to left. The two run shot by Villanueva in the sixth inning. And again, the reason there was even a runner on. Wild pitch. And a strikeout. Myers reached at first. Galvis strikes out. What a strikeout for Hirano. Here's our Arco top tier play, Matt Caesar. On a sinking liner, and Caesar over to make the catch in the slide to make the grab. Matt Caesar, 23.5 feet per second, 65% catch probability. Bottom line is he got the job done. Well, Matt Caesar now batting and taking strike one, the high strike. Fly to right, struck out swinging. Rounder softly by the mound towards short. Ahmed bare hands and throws wow. in time to get Caesar. Nice play. Well, a one, two, three inning. And then look at this Ahmed play. Do or die bare handed. He gets it done. 4 2 Diamondbacks. As Padres Baseball, brought to you by your San Diego Honda dealers. Visit us at sdhondadealers.com. By Tough Turtle Turf, a full landscape design company. And by Jerome's Furniture, where Jerry's price is the lowest price every day. 4 2 Diamondbacks on top back in Phoenix. A very warm day outside, roof closed inside. For game three of this three game series between the Padres and the Diamondbacks. Padres took game one, Diamondbacks secure game two, and today Arizona with a 4 2 lead as they come to bat in the bottom of the seventh inning. And you see back to back innings here for Makita. A 1 2 3, sixth inning, and now it's to the seventh. Christian Walker is going to pinch hit. And the pitcher spot to lead things off here in the bottom of the seventh. On a strike now to Walker with Dyson and Marte to follow. Anybody gets on, Paul Goldschmidt could have a chance.
Powell to the screen, one and two. Walker recalled from AAA Reno on April the 8th, started the year at AAA. Last year was in 11 games in the big leagues for the Diamondbacks. And was on the postseason roster for them. It was the PCL MVP in 2017. That's quite an accomplishment. Yep. Went 309 AAA last year. Strikes out this time though. McKee gets him to begin things here in the seventh. One down. What do you do with this little uh, frisbee at 69? I mean, that's. It's uphill. It's tough to, you know, up in the zone really plays for Makita. He's retired all four Diamondbacks he's faced since coming into this game. And the last two by way of the K. Here's Gerard Dyson. Takes strike one. Dyson 0 for 3. Strikeout, ground out, line out. Down 0 2. On the ground towards second, and Perella to first for out number two. Arco, quality top tier gas for less. Two down here in the seventh, and it brings up Cattell Marte. Singled back in the first inning to right field. Uh, struck out, grounded out. One for nine in the series for the Diamondbacks second baseman. Lead on that cut, 81 mile an hour fastball by him, 0 and 2. Kind of neat seeing two Japanese born pitchers in this ball game. Makita, born in Yaisu, Japan. Hirono, born in Kyoto, Japan. Both got together before the game the other day. I still want to go to Japan and watch a big league ball game over there. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I've been to the Tokyo Dome. They call it the Big Egg, don't they? Yeah. Where they play the yeah, the Tokyo Giants, correct? Yes. That's the home yep. venue for the Giants. Very festive atmosphere. Yeah. Cheering sections. One two is softly lined to second and Perella makes the catch build of the cap high. It's a one two three seventh inning for Makita to the eighth four two Diamondback.
four to two the Diamondbacks on top of the Padres. And it'll be Austin Hedges to face a new pitcher Jorge De La Rosa into the game now. Well the veteran the left hander his 10th game in very nice numbers. Lefty's hitting a over in 12 at bats. This year for De La Rosa. Boy, you know, came around full circle. 1998, signed with the Diamondbacks. He's been around a long, long time. Milwaukee, Kansas City, Colorado. Hedges has one of two Padres hits today. A single to left field in the third, and struck out in the fifth. Carlos Suarez has come out on deck to pinch hit for Makita. De La Rosa still flipping it up there about 93. He's got the four seam fastball, the splitter, the cutter. Elevates and Hedges strikes out on the 93 fastball. That was a 13th strikeout today for Diamondbacks pitching. Don, he did just that. Up around the letters. For the strikeout, then De La Rosa, the one who loved pitching in Colorado, right? Because he said it forced him to keep his breaking ball down more. He felt more comfortable throwing that breaking ball in Colorado as opposed to on the road. One down here in the eighth, and here is the Swahe. Stack it up on the right side in the shift. It's the Padres pinch hitter. And strike one, one and one. Both pens are currently busy. Look at the shift on the right side. He's got that crossfire action, De La Rosa. You can see why the numbers are really good against left handed hitters. Little number in front of the plate. It's a fair ball. And it's out number two. Jeff Math is jumping out there aggressively. And Stayed fair for him, so he picked it up quickly and threw out a swahe. That thing was still spinning. Two down. It's going to be frustrating for a hitter. You want to, you know, have a good at bat, hit it solidly. You know, you'd feel better if you square one up right at somebody, but uh, good hustle by Carlos out of the box. Comes Tori Lavello as De La Rosa gets some two outs here in the eighth and he's had Archie Bradley up in the pen. Looks like he's going to go get him. So pitching change from Chase Field in Phoenix, Arizona. Diamondbacks have a 4 2 lead.
Cubs have lead over the Padres with two down here in the eighth. And Archie Bradley coming in here trying to get the final out of the top of the eighth inning. He's become somewhat of a cult hero here yes. in the Valley of the Sun for the Diamondbacks. His 12th game. Very nice numbers. He's got some uh, really hot stuff out of that hand. 14 strikeouts. Max effort type pitcher. Forcing fastball about 95. He'll cut it. He'll sink it. Along with a changeup and a curveball. And well, Margo fouls it off to the right. One and one. High leverage relievers, and he is one of them. Andrew Miller, think about him, multiple innings. Yep. For Stavinsky for the Astros. Man, high leverage can be a little earlier, right? Sure can. Over those big outs, may fall. Sometimes that save comes in the seventh or eighth. Popped up foul. Off to the right and out of play. There's Craig Stammen on that list. He's been able to go multiple innings in high leverage late situations. So they've got a couple good arms down there. They've got Bradley, Boxberger. Boxberger with six saves on the year. Swing and a miss. 14th strikeout for Padres hitters today. To the bottom of the eighth, 4 2 Diamondbacks. First time we'll see the Rockies since this took place back on April the 11th. It was quite a day. It was the finale of that series. Not seen them since. See the Rockies tomorrow night in one of a three game series. Arnado will be there. It's five for eight in the two games and turning from his suspension, Blackman. To a 3 d one start, tremendous start. There's a liner into right center field. It's going to get down. Myers cuts it off, gets it back in quickly. It's a leadoff single for Paul Goldschmidt. Uh, Phil Maton just into this game. I think hitters should look at video of Paul Goldschmidt and the way he swings the bat and the way he takes pitches the way he does. He got a fastball down and away, and you know what? He says, okay, I'll take that, and I'll just drive it the opposite way for the single. A lot of guys out there trying to pull everything and pull off of it, and launch angle, and launch angle. Throw to first, and back is Goldschmidt. Well, Goldschmidt's been on base in six straight plate appearances. Two singles, a double, a triple, and two walks. On to begin things here in the eighth. 
Diamondbacks looking to obtain some insurance. As Maton comes in after two shutout innings for Makita, who struck out two and retired all six that he faced coming in. Longest out in form of the big leagues for Makita. Maton, seventh appearance. And a nice start of the season for Phil. Really good splits. Three to one on the strikeouts to walks ratio. J. Pollock walking the first single in the fourth inning. Flight out to left in the fifth. On the hook today for the Padres, Joey Lucchese with five innings, allowing four runs. Strike two. Good series for Pollock, three for six. And the first game of the series off. It's a game the Padres won. Throw over and back is Goldschmidt. Outfield straight away on AJ Pollock. Homered here last night. Now five home runs on the year. Ground ball left side. Being a wave will go to second for one on to first, and it won't be in time. And get the lead runner in Goldschmidt. One down here in the eighth. Tough to double up Pollock. Right field. And as an infielder, you get that ball, slow roller, hot smash. You know what you want to do. It's key on the feed to second base. Perella at the second base this afternoon. He gets to the bag, two handed grab. He did everything he could. But Pollock is too speedy. One out, one on. And Chris Owings coming up. Owings 0 for 3. He's put the ball in the air three times, flying out to center twice. The last time up, flying out to right. Did you see today where Chris Bryant got hit in the head in Colorado? By I the way, I heard that. I've not seen it. He didn't go down. He stayed on his feet and was walked off under his own power. Very, very scary. Very scary. Cubs have a 9-7 lead over the Rockies today. They're in the ninth. The fly ball to right, and Myers in and over for out number two of the inning. Let's revisit our keys to the game brought to you by your San Diego Honda dealers. Mighty Casey strikes them out. Well, we're talking about the young left hander Joey Lucchese and his strikeouts. Five innings, four strikeouts. Use bats to wax snakes. Well, only two hits, a single, a two run home run by that kid, cutting the lead in half. Two run shot by Villanueva. Here's Nick Ahmed. One for three. A two run shot back in the fourth inning. And was swinging for the fences there. This is his third home run of the year. Only hit of the series, one for eight. Looking ahead of the ninth, Myers, Villanueva, and Hosmer expected two, three, and four. Fly ball center field. Margot moves over and makes the catch that sends us to the ninth inning. Diamondbacks have a 4 2 lead.
It's the final out of the eighth. And back out there to start the ninth with Will Myers to lead it off. Myers, Villanueva, and Hosmer we expected here in the ninth inning. Padres trailing by two. Yeah, looking down at that bullpen for the Diamondbacks, uh, the snake pit down there, it's all quiet. No action. Myers with a one hopper picked by Ahmed who gets up and throws him out. That is a spectacular play. Wow. Robs Myers with a base hit on a hot shot. Absolutely terrific. Folks, you just saw a big league shortstop making a big league play. It's a Bill Howe play of the game. Archie Bradley loves it. That thing was by him. <laughs> you know what? I remember talking with Phil Nevin, now third base coach of the Yankees. This is down the line into the left field corner off the bat of being a Weba. He is thinking two and into second base he'll go standing. One out double second hit of the day. When Phil Nevin was manager of the Reno Aces as we see being a once again a breaking ball speeds up his bat inside the bag at third for extra bases. Phil Nevin said as the manager of the Reno Aces he thought he said. Nick Ahmed was the best shortstop he has ever seen. One out runner at second Hosmer coming up tying run at the plate here for the Padres and stay hot Christian Villanueva. There is strike one. Hosmer with a walk in the second since then he has struck out. A little number in front of the plate. Foul back going to. <laughs> Jay Pollock, the center fielder, into left center for Hosmer to go the other way. Bradley's never had a four out save in his career. That's what they're looking for here in this game. Got the final out of the eighth, first out of the ninth, but a double and now a liner foul. Yeah, on all accounts, you look down there when you look at the uh, the bullpen, Brad Boxberger with six saves. He's probably down. Apparently unavailable. Yep. In a way, but it's second base, one down in the ninth. Fouled off again. Strikeouts have been a problem today for the Padres. 14 strikeouts as a team today. Boy, it'd be nice if Eric Cosmer could trade places with Christian Villanueva. Outfield playing to go the other way with the good fastball out of the hand of Archie Bradley. Pollock over towards the left field gap. Dyson over near the left field line, shading that area. Osmer fouls back another 96 from Bradley. Padres have been held to three hits in this game today. And two of them for Christian Villanueva. Homered in the sixth, more recently has doubled in the ninth. And Bradley backs off, wants to see the signs again from Jeff Mathis.
Now he's calling him out. Not sure he couldn't see him or. Yeah, maybe too quick with the signs. Maybe just want to be on the same page. You don't want to cross him up. Had that runner out there at second base yeah. and be in the way of him. And so Ahmed can see the signs as well. Tying run the plate for the Padres here in the ninth inning, trailing four to two. Osmer now, Barella next. One up double by Villanueva, who's at second base. In the dirt, gets away, and Villanueva will not advance. Wasn't sure, couldn't really see it, so stays at second base. Better to be safe than sorry. His run does not mean much. Absolutely right. From his vantage point, okay, he's looking to see where the ball is. Really tough for him to determine how far back that ball goes. And you're right, Don. Rather stay put. Hosmer it's on the ground to second. Marte will go to first. Villanueva takes third, but there are now two outs in the ninth inning. Here comes Jose Perella. They are standing in Phoenix. Two down in the ninth inning. Being a waiver at third. Perella does represent the tying run. There's strike one at 95. <laughs> Foul back going to. Being away with third base, two down in the ninth inning. Perella strikes out, and that's the ball game. Padres striking out 15 times today. Archie Bradley does get the four out save as the Diamondbacks take two out of three from the Padres.